Hi, I'm Nigel Baker, and you're listening to The Future Financial Advisor. We're running this podcast to create an avenue for advisors to share their thoughts and their their best interests and really trying to attract those advisors who want to take the industry forward. What we want is great businesses are really making a difference and really making a big impact to their clients, and we want to know how they're doing it. So in this series, we're going to be discussing the latest digital platforms, some best practices, evidence-based investing strategies. We want to give financial advisors the tools they need to help more investors improve their financial well-being. So if you're ready to take the industry forward, modernize your advisory practice and reach a new generation of investors and the new generation of advisors, then this show is for you. So all our recordings and podcasts are general advice. All the content, all the people interviewing here, it's all their own opinions and all their own views. In no way does it constitute any personal advice or recommendations. If you need specific advice, please go and seek an advisor. Thanks very much. Good morning. We're here to talk about the quarterly market review, first quarter 2022. Now, we all came into 2022 we're hoping that perhaps the world would get a little bit simpler, a little less complicated, but it hasn't. There's been a lot going on in the world. I've got Dr. Steve Garth with me here today to help us digest this and talk about what's going on. Welcome, Steve. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. So some of the key themes, Steve, were we've had the, the war in Ukraine, which is really sad to see. We've had inflation, interest rates. I mean, overall, markets or well, most portfolios are still performing very well. But one of the key concerns for investors is what's going to happen next. We've got inflation, interest rates going up, and of course, an Australian election coming up in May as well. So let me start off by talking about how the Australian market performed in the last quarter, because what you mentioned, inflation, interest rates, and the war in Ukraine all played into that. Mm. And you can see in the chart we've got up at the moment, Nigel, how right at the very start of the quarter, the market came off, and that was on the fear of rising inflation and rising interest rates. So mainly tech stocks got hit. And then you can see the market recover a little bit, but then towards the end of February, that's when the Russian troops went into Ukraine, and that caused a great deal of uncertainty, and you see the market wobble down again. Then on March the 16th, the US Federal Reserve did put up interest rates by 0.25%, and even though rising rates was widely feared, when the rates actually went up, the market said, actually, the economy's in pretty good shape, and the market both here in Australia and in other markets uh, continued to go up. So quite a roller coaster of a ride in Australia. But the Australian market has finished 2.2% positive for the quarter. And yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? I think a lot of people will be looking at their reports for the quarter a little bit nervous, but when we look at the particularly the performance in equities, it's been quite good despite the roller coaster. Yeah, although not so when we go globally, and there's reasons for this. Australia has sort of defied gravity. If you look at this chart, Australia is positive, but the other markets are negative. And the reason for this is that Australia, as sort of everyone knows, main sectors here are banks mm-hmm. and mining. So banks do well when interest rates go up or, or mm-hmm. interest rates are expected to go up. And mining does well because there's a commodity boom going on at the moment, partly caused by inflation or the commodity boom is adding to inflation. So the Australian market does really well in these conditions. Other markets, so take the US where it's very heavily into tech stocks, you know, the Apple, Googles and Netflix all there. They're the stocks that really got whacked over the quarter. So you can see that the international markets are negative. And of course, Europe is right in the middle, if you like, of the conflict in the Ukraine. Mm. So Australia, a positive quarter, uh, negative quarter for other markets, but for the one year return that we've got there, that's really good. You know, markets are still up, you know, 12, 15% over 12 months. That's really good. Yeah, and look, I think expectations now are that uh, markets are getting a bit tougher. We've seen that in, uh, movement in, in markets around the world. Property markets here are starting to get a little bit softer. So our expectations perhaps for the year ahead should be a little bit lower than perhaps last year, although we never know exactly what's going to happen. We, we, we don't know, but the expectation is that, you know, gee, for the last uh, gee, 10, 11 years, we've really been in a bull market in equities. Um, it's been phenomenal ever since GFC. You don't expect the expected return to be as high as it has been going forward. Now, Steve, one of the key components of our investment philosophy is to stay well diversified. And part of that approach is we have exposure to cash and bonds. Uh, and bonds have served clients well for a long, long period. Uh, the last time we've had negative returns is 1994. 
But this quarter hasn't been too good for bonds. So do we do we get out of bonds? What, what should we be doing? Yeah, it's a great question, Nigel. You're absolutely right. It's a bad quarter for bonds. In fact, it's the worst quarter on record. So it beats 1994. So we should say that it's rare that bonds have a negative return, but it does happen from time to time. Mm. Why has it happened this time? It's got to do with the expectations around inflation and interest rates. So the bond yields price in the expectations of future interest rate prices. And you can see on the chart here, the line there is the bond yield. Now, normally we wouldn't show bond yields, it's a little bit esoteric, but the yields going up means that bond prices go down. And you can see that in the chart of quarterly returns underneath with those two big negatives in the last six months. Now, we all know that interest rates are going to go up, so should we expect bond prices to keep going down? Actually, the answer is we don't know what the bond prices will do. What we do know is the market's fully priced in its expectations around future interest rates and future inflation. So it's just as likely that the bonds will go positive this quarter as they will negative because we've already priced in our expectations of interest rates. When interest rates do go up, that by itself won't change the return on the bonds. It'll be the expectations around the future that will affect the bond return. Yeah. But I think your point, Nigel, in a diversified portfolio that's got equities and bonds, uh, it's still been an outstanding 12 months return for investors. Yeah, thanks, Ian. I think um, it's important from an investment philosophy point of view is that while we challenge it, um, what we do know, and I think this was a quote by, from Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, he said, there might be a better investment philosophy out there, but there's an infinity worse. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's so um, for our clients, it's, it is constantly looking at what we're doing, that's why you're involved in the team as well. How can we improve these things? But we'll, we'll not drastically you know, make big calls quarter to quarter, despite what's going on in the past quarter. Because as you said, even though bonds had the worst quarter last in this quarter, or the previous quarter, it could be the best quarter next quarter. Um, and so those knee-jerk reactions are not something that we will ever sort of recommend. That's right, Michael. As you well know, it's not time in the market, it's the time in the market that pays off. And, you know, over the year, over the last 10 years, it's been outstanding results for investors in mm. diversified portfolios. Yeah, okay. Well, Steve, thank you so much again for your time. I hope uh, the clients, the last video was our most uh, watched and most engaged ever. Yeah, we've been uh, producing videos now for a couple of years, so, uh, thanks so much. I, I think this is very helpful and hopefully for the clients watching, please ask if there's any questions. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. You've been listening to the Future Financial Advisor. So if you've been enjoying the show, please make sure to share it with your network and leave a review on your favorite listening platform. Or if you've got some ideas or thoughts or would like to come on as a guest or know someone who would be a great guest, then please let me know. To learn more about CNTM, just go to our website, cntm.com.au or look me up on LinkedIn. Look forward to speaking with you and see you on the next episode.